I think this will do for what we need to move on to uh, the next level here, and that's going to be detailing in this character, or this um, the next level when we come back to this. And we detail that up. Here's an area here that we could break up a little bit more. Put a little more detail in there. And you can see the ambient occlusion is really providing that nice kind of you know, idea of my depth um, that I'm sculpting with. So definitely use those viewport filters. Turn them on. Uh, turn on the shadows on your lights as well once you get going and use that to give you a feeling for the depth. We'll do that in a moment here once we start building up into the tree on his back. We'll start using things like that. So I'm just kind of detailing, or just defining really is what I'm doing. I'm not getting into the full nitty gritty details yet. Just kind of breaking this up. It's kind of twisted root structure. I think that's going to give us a good base start for where we want to go with this guy. So you can see with the wax brush, very quick and easy to work with. I think that's it, uh, enough for that right now. I'm going to put yet another layer down because I'm, what, what I'm going to do with this wax brush is I'm going to leave the uh, fall off on that with that kind of sharp fall off. And I want to put um, a bit of uh, some kind of knobs, like some kind of, on trees you often see these kind of knobs or knee-like structures, right? I think they call them, in some, some cases, you know, knees on the, the tree or you can get these rooty knobs happening along the, the structure of it. So let's start adding some of these things in. Again, breaking up that surface. And they're just kind of these bulbous kind of um, structures, growths along the, the roots here. And another good brush for that is the bulge brush. We could grab that and start to bulge that in. The bulge brush I find is very sensitive, which is nice as well. I'm going to bring that down and bring the brush up a little bit. I'm using the big fall off with it. And we can start to build these kind of knobby, uh, kind of knuckle-like structures in here. Let's uh, put some larger ones along here. And again, the idea is we're, we're roughing in, we're working in this form, and we're starting to define it a little bit more um, by putting these kind of knobby-like structures along it. Um, this is a good way to kind of, if you wanted to take the character a little bit further, you could kind of start to define these kind of knuckle-like structures, maybe along toes or uh, along um, knuckles on a fist, things like that. That'll do for there. Um, so we can move, move a little bit further on with this here. What we want to do now, I'm going to create, uh, let's name this one here. We'll just keep that as, as knobs in there. And this one here is our... Um, lower right leg. So I should put that as lower right leg. And what we want to do now is, is start to add a little bit of viney kind of detail. We can build up some more root structure to build underneath here. Um, while I'm in here, I want to make sure that these roots do continue underneath our rocks as well. So maybe we start to build a little bit of that in. And we'll come back and we'll fill a lot of these gaps and make sure it appears like the roots are kind of defining underneath these rocks or continuing around them. We're going to do a little bit of that right now with a custom uh, vector displacement tool. I think that's good enough for what we want to achieve right now. Let's there we go. build this structure in a bit get these roots continuing kind of underneath these rocks and stone structures here. Now we have a lot of these gaps. When we were building the initial structure here, I left a lot of these gaps you can see um, on the character. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because I want to continue these roots. Um, I want this kind of wrapping root-like structure on here. So we won't focus too much on this one here. Um, but what we will do is we could quickly rough that in as well. So again with the wax brush, same idea. We're kind of building up this overlapping root structure in here. Make that a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger. Um, and we can just start working in these kind of twisting roots that are really wrapping around. I'm going to leave some space in here because we're going to get really tight in there with a nice vector displacement tool that will work kind of as a, uh, a nib on the end of our sculpt brush there to define that a little more. You see I have these nice gaps all around here. That'll do here as well. We'll fill this in with roots. I'm going to focus on this part here right now uh, and some of these little gaps in here. So 
Again, back to the sculpt brush. I'm going to take this sculpt brush and I'm going to make a new tool with that. And I'm going to call it my um, Vine VDM tool. And then what we're using this Vine VDM tool for, um, we're going to use a full fall off with that. And if we come into the stamps, I have a bunch of different stamps in here. Um, a lot of these stamps are custom made. Um, and as well, I've grabbed some of these nice stamps off of the um, Mudbox community. I would definitely recommend you check out the Mudbox community. So this one I'm using here is just a simple tube stamp. It's actually called Tube 2. And I found this on the Mudbox community. I would definitely recommend you take a look at the fourth tab above the viewport there, Mudbox community. If you jump in there, there are all sorts of resources in here. So underneath the library, I'm browsing stamps. You can browse some stencils in there as well. All of these different stamps, regular uh, image stamp based stamps and vector displacement type of stamps. So there's all sorts of different things in here. Um, a lot of users have uploaded some as well as a lot of Autodesk um, based stamps as well. All sorts of different creature effects and uh, different things to customize your tools. Um, I, this tube one works as a way to customize the tool to give this overall tube effect. Um, I definitely recommend you take a look at it here. There are all sorts of different stencils in here as well that you can uh, take a look at and play with. So back to the 3D view um, with my tube tool. Uh, back, just one more thing. You can actually click the download and download that live right into your tray. So definitely take a look at that, play with that. So with our v Vine VDM tool that we're working with here, I'm going to use that tube two, uh, tube two VDM uh, structure. I'm going to use my strength up to the full effect there. I want my state my stamp spacing we'll leave that alone for now we'll try the build up there at 50 um, and what we can start to do with this guy here is start to add in some different kind of um, effects in here so with this let's go in and, and maybe start to add let's see what we get here if we start to bring in some of this here we can start to use this tube tool here to kind of define these little finer details as we go, whoops, that's a little bit harsh. We can start to bring in these little finite details, and this is excellent for bringing that kind of root like structure down here just to define, especially down near the ends here, down by the toes. Just kind of work at blending some of these effects in and fill some of these gaps in here with this tube as well. So the nice thing about this tube effect here is it, uh, it gives this nice viney structure as I go along. You get more of a proper tube effect rather than just a regular fall off that you would get from that. And that's what the power of vector displacement as far as a tool nib or affecting um, the way your tool operates is that you can get these effects that a regular image won't give you. You can get these undercuts. And that's what this tube tool is doing. It's actually effectively undercutting as I go so you get more of a a tube like structure around it here. I'm actually pressing quite lightly as I go in working with this one. Um, just to point out I'm purposely using a lot of tools on here that um, if I'm not providing them with this tutorial you can grab off the Mudbox community. A lot of these amazing tools you can just grab up there. You can also customize and upload your own as you go. Any uh, custom tools that I use in this I'll put up on the Mudbox community for everyone to grab. There we go. So then we've just kind of used this to define the roots a little bit more. This kind of rooty, twisted rooty structure. I think that's fine. Now let's use it for a little bit of a different purpose here. We want to fill in some of these gaps and have these, these kind of root uh, or vine-like uh, structures kind of carrying between the boulders, the rocks, the stones. Um, so we can do that really quickly with this tool here as well. So let's start to do that. We can actually get the um, a nice kind of structure here of vines carrying across maybe across this rock here so you can see I'm able to relatively quickly carve in some nice vine structure in there carry this forward some kind of rooty like web structure that maybe continues right across and we'll build this up a bit coming over the edge There we go. We can just keep building these kind of vine-like structures in there. Maybe there's a couple of them that 
carry across here. And we can really start going to town with that. On this, we want to really fill in a lot of these gaps with this um, tube-like structure in here. And if we switch back to our wax brush um, on there, make sure we're on the same fall off. We can use that in conjunction with the the um, Vine VDM brush I'm using there and just build up some maybe a little bit thicker kind of base vine structure here that carries underneath these boulders here as we go and switch back to our vine tool and maybe put some vines that kind of twist around that or overlap that. So we're using it two ways. We're using it to define these little vines and also to further define our our root structure. So we can take that and really build that up. Over here I, I started roughing in this one here. Let's not go too crazy on that right now, but I'll just bring in a little bit of kind of vine detailing here. And you can see using the ambient occlusion there again, it's really giving some nice definition to see the effect, the overall effect that we're getting. And that's what we want to do. We want to keep filling in these gaps here, not just filling in the gaps, but crawling over top of these rocks and these boulders as well, these vines here. Um, we could build a big structure coming up over top of this here, connecting up into other roots that we could have coming up around the neck area and things like that. So I think what we're going to do here is we're going to stop here and continue on in the next video. Uh, we're going to focus on taking this tree root guy um, right from his leg right up through the back here. So I think we'll jump into the, the back in the next video.